Welcome back, everybody, to Raven Stars Witching Hour. I'm your host, Solaris Blue Raven, and I'm here with my very special guest, Dan Willis. And Dan, you with me? Yes, yes. It's such a pleasure to do a show with you tonight. Oh, it's a pleasure to have you on. Thank you for joining us. It's it's a real honor to have you here. I really appreciate it. I know you've taken some time off from doing interviews as well. Is that right? Um, many years, yeah. <laughs> many years. I, I was, uh, I did a couple of interviews, uh, you know, after, uh, after the national press club, that was way back in 2001. That was like 13 years ago, you know? Mm-hmm. So I was on coast to coast, you know, CBS interviewed me and, you know, I've been on different, uh, talk shows and stuff like that. But, you know, awesome. after, uh, doing that, uh, Having to research that article on media control, you know, we, we were, uh, you know, you and I were sharing some information during the break and, you know, trying to, you know, I have to apologize. I was just shorting out. There's so much information right. that, you know, That's fine. it basically, it basically make it shorts you out, you know, right. because there's just so much, so much that it keeps its own best secrecy. So it, cause it's so complicated. So I'm just going to tell everybody, um, if you want to read the facts on the whole thing and the whole historical timeline, go to the web and it details you out. And, uh, would like to, uh, talk a little bit about the, why the giggle factor and why, um, uh, and, and how this whole situation, because it's so, from what we're indoctrinated into, into this life, and the lies that we're uh, we're fed by certain controlling elements, uh, has, has formed this reality that uh, has, you know, when you have little little bits and pieces, you know, when I was, was going across the United States touring in the major cities after the disclosure conference, every single uh, TV crew that came in, they would interview and they would take it and spin it with the giggle factor. Mm. And the giggle factor is this thing that this is nervousness because people know there's something up, but it's kind of like um, it's kind of like a glitch in the matrix, if you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. I certainly do, and I've seen it. Yeah. So what you, what made you come back on the radar after taking some time off? Uh, I you know I I'm seeing I'm seeing the the. You know, after the Gulf oil spill and after Fukushima, Mm -hmm. uh, after uh, meeting with uh, all these inventors with National Security Acts slapped on them, trying to bring a solution to the world, Mm -hmm. uh, after having firsthand, uh, you know, uh, seeing the the higher executives, which are basically all connected with the CIA, uh, suppressing this information from the mainstream media, you know, really, the only thing we can do is, uh, you know, share our blogs and do talk show radios and alternative media while we still have this avenue of free speech. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's getting infiltrated, too. But, you know, I, I really think at this point in the continuum, it's it's uh, it's kind of like I'm not going to p- compromise. I, I, mean, I don't I don't expect other people to compromise either. I mean, we're talking about being celestial beings in a suit here on this world and um, without boundaries or borders or anything else they want to pull out of their butts. I mean, if you want to look at the bigger picture and the multidimensional picture and the picture that's based on higher consciousness, then, then they need to honor that. And, and all these rules and regulations need to fall and just fade to black. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, the science, it, that's the other thing, you know, like back in 1957, you know, there was a, a, a uh, global conspiracy to remove all of the uh, aspects of consciousness with psychology out of all the textbooks. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and also, you know, in 1946, when the Rockefeller Foundation, you know, and along with the Carnegie and the international end of it, rewrote all the history books and, and took out the connections with the occult with the Nazis, you know, because the Nazis were very much into going out of the box, so to speak, mm-hmm. and looking at other areas. And, you know, and I worked, uh, you know, I had an unusual experience that uh, led me to uh, somewhat of an ET experience, I guess you could say, Mm -hmm. that led me to, um, uh, it had to do with geometry and consciousness that a being was conveying to me. I had this Kundalini experience, and I won't go into all the details, but at the time, back in 1976, I was seeking out... uh, People who were uh, foremost in the science in this, you know, because I had a scientific background, and uh, I went 
to visit with Dr. Marcel Vogel back in uh, the early 80s while he was still working for the IBM, who uh, opened up a laboratory, uh, Psychic Research Incorporated. And uh, I drove up there in the middle of a storm from San Diego to San Jose and and sat on this couch and met with him. And uh, this woman came to the door, making a long, very long story short, and he was able to take uh, this crystal that he was able to cut in a specific geometry. Uh, and he was, a, he was a top scientist at IBM. He had like a, over 140-some patents. He invented the, the color phosphors for c- television, the, the mm-hmm. magnetic coatings and hard drives. I mean, he was a top-level scientist. But he uh, had an experience with uh, man-plant communication. He thought it was uh, total garbage until he uh, decided to, do it as a creativity course for the engineers at IBM and uh, hooked up a script chart recorder on the split leads philodendron and uh, he formed the thought that he was going to uh, burn the plant leaf and as soon as his thought formed in his mind the script chart squiggled and he said that squiggle changed his life and mm-hmm. he was the type of mind that once you had a question he was like a pit bull. He would like grab onto it, and he wouldn't let go until he found the answer. And mm. that led him into, uh, you know, uh, you know. I was trying to understand the the aspects of this experience that I had with uh, geometry and consciousness, and what the relationship was. And uh, and so the, the crystal lattice structures. Obviously, there was you know around the world on planets, diverse cultures and and separated all had certain attributes to these clear stones mm-hmm. and uh, and also water. And so right. he uh, developed this laboratory that uh, studied the interaction of the uh, the quartz, the SiO2 to the H2O, the water, and uh, was able to find there's a, uh, there a certain geometries that interface with mind and consciousness that he was able to measure with uh i was able to set him up with a spectrophotometer he had a um um you know electron microscope that he built himself that ibm gave him as his retirement present Hmm. we had a full-on laboratory and we were able to he was a top level scientist and uh you know uh all this was able to be validated so Mm -hmm. uh the thing is, is that that's the last thing they want us to know is our power right. of consciousness of who we are and, and our ability to affect and how we can affect the collective consciousness on this planet. And, totally. you know, these shows that we're doing, you know, they're, they're seeding thoughts and people can research and find out, you know, is this bullshit or not, you know, right. <laughs> and yeah. find out that there's a, there's a lot of science and fact behind it. Right, exactly. We'll keep it G-rated, too. <laughs> You're fine, though. Um, but, yeah, no, I totally agree with you. And, of course, there's the geometric light languages and everything else but uh, that correlates. But, but once again, the leap that mankind needs to make in order for that to happen is to let go of the programming, which is also related to um, belief systems, which is also, unfortunately, related to religion. And once the religion falls and, and they take that step out of religion and go to the level of spirit – then they can start embracing higher consciousness with multidimensional ascension and mastery and, and understand that language that you're talking about because that's the key to the evolution of man is through frequency, through higher consciousness. And, of course, they're not there because they've built their own frequency fences. You know, we, we kind of um, were, were kind of pinging back and forth about the psyops. And, and I believe a lot of psyops have been taking place, too, um, you know, in order to control, manipulate, dumb down, create fear uh, and stall the evolution of man. Well, look at the stuff we're talking about. You know, if we were talking about this stuff, let's say, let's say we go back in the 60s or something, you know, mm-hmm. talking about the stuff, you know, people think we're off our rocker, you know, we're like crazy, you know. Um, it, now, more people, more things have come out. There's more evidence. Uh, there's more science that has come out. Uh, people are starting to understand that there's, you know, like the Michelson Mori experiment that uh, was done many, many years ago, said that everything was separate, nothing's interconnected. Now, you know, it was like, I think it was 96 or something. They redid the experiment with more advanced measuring equipment Mm -hmm. that was able to determine that, yes, everything is interconnected. Nothing Mm -hmm. is separate. 
And, uh, you know, whenever you have a religion that teaches separation, that there's separation of you and, and you know, everything separate, uh, it, uh, I don't want to touch on the religion thing. It's a That's okay. I mean, religion and politics <laughs> but, are my, you know, two, two nasty little topics, but at the same time, they're what's caused the problems here on this world. <laughs> to some degree. Yeah. In, uh, in a, in a way there's a, um, it's the, uh, it's the lies that we're entrapped with, you know, mm-hmm. that uh, create all these problems in the world. It's all of our, all of our false indoctrination. And you know, it, can you imagine what it would take to re-educate everybody that you know everything you know is kind of basically wrong? Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Um, exactly. Can you imagine? If if the, we actually had disclosure, and yes, they had anti gravity like 60 years ago. Yes, we had free energy. We don't need these power lines running all over the place. You know, like J.P. Morgan, you know, shut down Tesla was trying to bring it over. Uh, you know, we we don't even need roads. We have there is anti gravity. Right, and take that uh, a step further to consciousness in motion. I mean, we could do anything. We're basically unlimited and unstoppable when we're fully engulfed in our avatar design, is what I would call it. But yeah, I, I understand yeah, what think, you're saying. Think about agriculture. You know, all mm-hmm. the technology. A lot of things aren't feasible because uh, because there's not enough power. You know, in order to do things. Mm-hmm. And if we were able to work more in harmony with the uh, with Earth Earth being that we uh, reside upon, uh, amazing things that happen. You know, they're doing the geoengineering with the weather, where the uh, crop failures are happening left and right. You know, we mm-hmm. got 35 fires happening up here in the Northwest. Right. right now, when you have flooding, you've got all these things, and there's there's weather manipulation going on, mm-hmm. and uh, and also you know is is known you know Native American people known you know is is definitely a link with consciousness and the weather. Oh, absolutely. You know, people on the planet. Um, mm-hmm. It's becoming a Franken Earth, unfortunately, and it's all it almost looks like it's being terraformed to some degree. But once again, you know, the solution to this equation is to take down um, this this false matrix that they've been doing and and redesign it. You know, is it too little, too late? I don't know. I mean, I sometimes think that it's uh, it's like it's too little or too late rather to to take care of this whole thing. It's like it's full speed ahead with these guys. So it's very disconcerting. Uh, well, you know, the battle, um, you know, the real truth is that the battle has has to do with our spiritual awareness. Mm-hmm. You know, this violence is not the answer. You can't. They they basically own that world. You know, they right. they they have all that stuff. You know, and uh, it's easy to be a bully, Dan. You know, that's easy to be like that. It's not so easy to have poise and higher consciousness. And and I don't think these people can hold the vibration of full light harmonic. I really don't think they can hold that consciousness. And I think that's why they they nose dive into this ugly little world that they want everybody else to live in. If we accelerate. To higher levels of consciousness well that's a threat to them yeah it's you know they they have their tentacles and everything all the all the uh, systems for change uh you know when uh you know after the press conference we you know toured across the cities and people don't have time to write letters to the representatives so i uh you know i'm technically literate so i put together an online fax and got all the uh all, you know the president and representatives. I even got all the embassies of the world, so people in other countries could contact their representatives. Nice. And over thirty thousand faxes went out. You know, uh, to the president and everything. And and I had people uh, send me back the responses. You know, so I post them online. You know, for accountability of how mm-hmm. they respond. And uh, it, basically, all the representatives have been indoctrinated how to respond to this issue based on you know. You have the uh, condom committee, which you know recommended to uh, Project Blue Book that there's uh, absolutely no evidence and it's not worth pursuing anymore. They really want to sh- they really want to put the lid on this thing, you know. So they, they don't want this uh, whole issue. They want people to still believe that we're looking like with SETI with electromagnetic. Uh, uh, telescopes, you know, out there looking for life out there when, when you and I know there's interdimensional life everywhere. Right. And uh, we've been uh, we've been visited and still are being visited and it's escalating uh, more and more every month, uh, all the uh, all the sightings that are going on. 
Right. Uh, they they want to keep this keep this uh, false reality that uh, we're disconnected. Mm -hmm. And if if you uh, if you go to Washington and testify, you know the the mainstream media will cut you off. If you go to contact your representatives, representatives have been indoctrinated. Uh, so you know just about every channel for change that you normally have have been compromised right. so the only way i can f i can see of fighting this battle is uh, not from the outer world but from the inner world from within mm -hmm. us to understand who we are and uh and we do all of us affect the uh, the global collective consciousness and i think mm -hmm. uh, enough enough of us uh start to become aware uh we may see we may see change mm-hmm no, I think you're right on that one. Yeah, multidimensional perspective is huge. And, uh, of course, a lot of us, I mean, for, for beings like us, it's pretty natural. But for a lot of people, it's hard for them to understand that. But that's where that's where we need to go, and that's where we need to be in, all, in order to alter this whole crazy equation that they've created. And uh, I don't like people trying to dictate my life. I don't, I don't get off on that. I don't think a lot of other people get off on it either. So it's, it feels like we've been gypped and had, and um, that just doesn't feel good to me. I mean, right down to the moon and everything else that they've been, you know, playing mock games with. Everything has been a, an, an obfuscation. I mean, you look at some of the, even the NASA pictures. How can you trust any of those photos? They're all airbrushed. They're all edited. So, um, you know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> yeah. and, then, and then what cracks me up, they have these images on the moon, and I'm looking at those images, and I'm like, oh, everybody's saying, well, they look like this, this, and this. I'm like, well, how do you know those weren't inserted to screw with your head even further? Yeah, like Donna Hare, who joined me in Washington as one of the 21 witnesses, uh, you know, they airbrush all the images out before they release them to the public. Yeah, NASA's right. heavily infiltrated, you oh, know, absolutely. as well. Yeah, exactly. So, but what I'm saying is also is if, they can, if they can airbrush them out, they certainly can insert those in. And the ones that they've and they inserted, do a sloppy job. I'll tell you they? what. Let me tell you something, Dan. When I looked at some of those pictures, I thought to myself, that is not extraterrestrial. That looks like a humanoid's work. So take it for what you want. But, yeah, I think that they've been messing around a, a hell of a lot. And, of course, that just creates more distraction and more chaos. And I'll tell you what. I don't have any tolerance for childish behavior. And to me, this is the most immature thing they could do on this world. Well, I, I totally agree with you. And, you know, and, and, you know, and they're sloppy about how yeah. they do and anybody who uh, knows what to look for, everything's hidden in plain sight. It's all there. Oh, yeah. It's all there available. It's just a matter of breaking through the indoctrination. You know, like my, my, uh, like my, my nephews are like, he's, uh, you know, born again Christians and, uh, you know, evangelical type, you know. And so they look at their uncle, oh, like my crazy UFO uncle, you know, he's into UFOs and aliens, you know, and that's all they, that's what they comprehend mm -hmm. uh, from their uh, perspective, you right. know. Or a um, byproduct of their belief systems. Yeah, that's too bad. That's for everybody, though. It, it's like the movie, you know, The Matrix, you know, where you have the blue pill people who have uh, basically been indoctrinated and, you know, this is their comfort zone of what they know and this, you know, they go, you know, uh, do the sports and, uh, you know, go to go to the work and uh, and watch the news and uh, taxes, this is their yeah. reality. And, <laughs> and then there's the red pill people who want to know there's something more going on. Why are these UFOs flying around? Why, why, is, it, why is there all this evidence? And then, but the government keeps denying, and and you know why is why are all these things happening, and why are we still driving internal combustion engines in the year 2014? You know, thank you. Uh, you yeah. know, there's people who ask these questions. I love those people that mm -hmm. ask questions. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. A, uh, totally. Yeah. Well, you know, and of course, once again, I mean, some of us do, we can see through the design. I mean, we can see that it's a lie. Um, some people can't, but the ones that can, I mean, it's up to us to kind of um, push forward and, and take down these barriers. That's the only way I can look at it. And, and um, that's the only way I see it anyway, is just to take down the barriers, take down the walls, take down the matrix. And I think the only way to do that, and we're never going to see a revolution ever, um, not here in the U.S. We'll, we might have to fight for our lives because of the oppression that eventually will take place, but I don't think we'll ever have a real revolution. Um, I could be wrong about that, but I, I think that um, unless there's a big EMP burst and the system goes down and gets reset and people start waking up on a higher level of consciousness, I don't, I don't see them moving to the next level. That's well, it's impression. interesting. You know, Werner von Braun was, you know, they gave him uh, a heads up on their future plans of false flag events, you know, to, uh, you know, 
mm-hmm. for their agenda, you know, which, you know, was the first was the Soviets, which we know was a lie because of the, the Nazis infiltrated and gave, they were lying, Alan Dulles and uh, General Gellin, the Nazi uh, that they brought into the CIA, mm-hmm. uh, they were lying to Truman, you know, about the false estimates. That's so they can pump in trillions of dollars into these black projects that the, um, the, well, it, the Nazis, you have to understand, were just a, a faction within this group. Mm-hmm. They were, right. uh, that they all have similar ideologies of, uh, you know, they're destined to rule the elite, to have a super advanced technology, and that uh, they, uh, you know, believe in eugenics, they... Uh, you know, all, all those characteristics, you know, and, and, you know, you have to, what they say, you know, follow the money, you know, mm-hmm. who's, who's, who's bankrolling these things, you know, who's, who's doing this stuff. And they'll give you an indication of, uh, of the, uh, of the families, so to speak, that are, uh, on this, on this agenda, that they're all kind of working collaboratively, although they, I'm sure they have their own little fighting amongst themselves, you know, mm-hmm. they, uh, yeah. because of their mentality, uh, you know, they eat their own. Wants to be the ruler, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're like snakes <laughs> chewing their tails up. Yeah. I mean, honestly, it's, it's pathetic when you think about it, but you have to ask yourself, how do they benefit? You know, what's the benefit? What's the final outcome for these guys? I mean, is it just playing? Well, King they, the they still need humans for, for, you know, they need the, the, to, for work and labor and you know <laughs> and uh you know we we think about the huge amounts of money that uh the uh, federal reserve uh the trillions of dollars were paying off of that was set up by uh Max Warburg who uh you know, I mean Paul Warburg who is brother of Max and who was helped finance Hitler you know mm-hmm. uh set up with Roosevelt uh back in 1913 Right. Uh, keep us on debt, and then we have, uh, you know, the pharmaceutical industries are making huge amounts of money, and yeah, you know, you have uh, mm-hmm. all these dysfunctional things that are sucking uh, huge amounts of money off of uh, people's slavery, you could say. Right, yeah, it's basically, um, it's just trying to trap the soul consciousness to some degree, I would say, you know, diverting the spirit and the... Um, our higher consciousness, but it's, it's really, uh, I don't know. It's very frustrating when I think about the bigger agenda of things, but you know, they could always replace people with androids. I mean, they can have everything automated. They don't really need slaves. If they want slaves, they can have programmed units. Um, of course, I think they want to program mankind because he's so easy to program. I mean, literally they're already under control, under mass control. So might as well use them as slaves, right? Except for the ones who are smart like us. Well, there's an imbalance, you know, mm-hmm. you know, like in the, in the tree of life, you have, you know, the two, pillars you have uh you have mercy and you have severity you know and you have uh this whole group operates you know far on the yang side on severity and there's not enough uh compassion in the world you know there we there there could be everybody could have a healthy good life where everybody would benefit everyone they don't have to reduce the population by 90 percent or anything like that they they believe themselves to be the intellectually uh, elite, and uh, they, uh, you know, and and how would you how would you try to go about, uh, you know, re-indoctrinating somebody into uh, <laughs> into understanding everything that uh, everything that you've you've learned has been based on a lie? Right. Yeah. It's it's basically mind blowing, and people wouldn't be able to handle it. A lot of people wouldn't. I mean, obviously there are a lot who can, but. Yeah, when I think about them being mentally supreme or superior, I'm just laughing because to me they're the most illiterate bunch of imbeciles I've ever encountered. I mean, in so far as what they've been doing, I don't think it takes real brilliance. They've been stealing people's patents. I mean, they stole Tesla's information and technology, so that's why they were able to accelerate in the underground to such a degree, if you ask me. I mean, they've been stealing information from brilliant minds and then taking them out or murdering them or trying to discredit them. So they're not the real bright ones, if you ask me. They're they're thieves and they're liars and uh, they're just, there's just people that I don't think have a lot of smarts but for some reason if you keep people stupid you know you'll be able to look intelligent and i think that's what's happened they've lowered the iq to the masses to such an extent they look bright yeah yeah you right, know yeah, they'll like look like geniuses if everybody's the iq water, is three uh, the chemtrails yeah. you have uh you know you have all these different uh you know the gmos and the food you know which uh you know it's interesting the uh, wikileaks uh you know of the bush administration uh wanting to punish uh, the countries that aren't not accepting their gmos you know and russia you know 
thank God they're not accepting it, and uh, France is fighting it. Uh, there was one WikiLeaks who said, "Well, if 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 Spain falls, the rest of Europe will go." You know, it's like that's like that's like military language. You know, mm-hmm. when a country falls, you know, Bullying. that's yeah. not like uh, helping feed the, which is all lies. You know, about helping feed more people with a genetically modified, which they do this. Uh, with the, all their people in the Food and Drug Administration and everything, that you know, the the rats uh, rats are fine for about three months, and they say, okay, yeah, it, it passed, you know, and then four months it develops these huge tumors, according to right. several independent studies that have been done, you know. Yeah, so no it's like, uh, yeah, it's like uh, slow. It affects our DNA. Uh, yeah, new absolutely. evidence is showing, and uh, it, it's poisoning. So I yeah, recommend everybody poison. to avoid GMOs. It's like raid. I mean, it's basically filler food with no nutrients and, and no value whatsoever and obviously created for fun. I think they do a lot of this stuff on this world because they can and no one has stopped them and no one has the power to step in and stop them. And I mean, really, right down to our military who's bought and sold. I mean, who's going to step in and, and take the helm and say, this is all wrong. We've got to reset it. I mean, I don't see anybody out there who can who really I don't want to say can. I don't think they will do it because they don't have the you know what's to do it. Um, that's the bottom line. It takes a lot of courage and a lot of bravery to counter such a bunch of evil, evil, uh, whatever you want to call them, cabals. But I think it needs to happen. I mean, I don't know if I'll see it in my lifetime. You know, I've said that before, but well, there's a lot of people that get at our brave souls that do get murdered. And that's try to true get too. Them. Yeah. And you have to understand the 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 degree of the. Uh, infiltration of the infrastructure to control and maintain control over the whole thing. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it, it does appear when you look at it that, you know, with, uh, you know, Monsanto, you know, copywriting seeds and, and making aluminum tolerant while they spray, uh, you know, all this aluminum all over the place. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then they, they mess up the, uh, with the geoengineering, mess up all the well, the crop failures so that everybody will be dependent. And then I hear that, uh, you know, Nestle wants to um, uh, privatize water, you mm-hmm. know, and I hear the water is being contaminated with all the fracking and there's other nefarious things going on with, with the water, you know. So what they want to do is they want to slowly kill everybody while profiting off everyone. Yep, it's a know, slow bleed like, and it's a slow death. And I, I'll tell you what, I'm not one for slow deaths at all. I don't like it and I don't appreciate it. You know, I, I mentioned this before on another one of my shows, but in, in a military, you know, in a situation where you have an opponent, you take them out clean, you don't torture them, you don't play these sick little games, you're not narcissistic and sadistic and all that other stuff. You know, with class, you would just take your opponents out instantaneously. These people want to bleed everybody to death. They want to slowly torture everybody. They want to bleed their life force to death. They want to make you miserable, keep you distracted. I've never seen such a bunch of sick people in my entire life. Anybody who gets off on on watching this civilization go down the sewer like this and being part of the problem and not the solution has a real freaking problem, if you ask me. And it's just, uh, you know, good thing I'm not off world with a big old, you know, Death Star because I'd probably be using it right now. So, <laughs> well, you know, it it can make you very sad, and it can make you very mad. Uh, the whole thing when you think about it, and you know, I I'm not a, into the doom and gloom, you know, thing, mm-hmm. you know, purporting that, you know, and you know, there are even another perspective of the whole thing, and that, uh, and that this whole thing on another higher level, from another out of the box perspective, so to speak, is that all these challenges basically are are uh, in, in a way assisting our spiritual evolution uh in that uh how we, how we process the whole thing you know how we are, are we uh are people doing things that to to help mankind are we are we uh standing up to this thing are we in other words their their power is secrecy and operating behind uh behind the cloak of secrecy, national security, or whatever. And the people's power is disclosure. You know, um, you know it could be that... Uh it could be that, uh, you know, like Einstein said, reality is an illusion and a persistent one at that, uh, that uh, reality is on another dimension, that this, this whole pain and suffering and horrible... Uh, reality that we're in is nothing but a uh, 
a, uh, a mock-up reality to aid in our spiritual evolution. And some people will go one way and other people will go the other way, you know. It's a state of consciousness. And it could be that the uh, misinterpretation of the rapture is some type of dimensional shift that uh, this whole thing is going to sort out people at, mm -hmm. at some point. I don't I know. I think it is sorting no people idea. out. I think you're seeing people for what they really are. That's the one thing I have noticed. The, the quote-unquote transparency goes across the board, across the world. And one thing I have noticed is that you're seeing people for what they really are. And they're, t and they're showing their colors. And I'll tell you what, it's real nice to see because we know um, who's evolved and ascended in consciousness and who's not. And, and that's what I'm looking at anyway when I see it. And I don't say that with judgment. It's an observation. But I'm very clear with it. So, um, yeah, I was just, uh, I think the fallout is just going to be, um, hardcore though. I mean, it's, it's a rocky road ahead, if you ask me without being too gloom and doom, of course, but you know, we'll see, um, this time next year, if I'm, you know, <laughs> if things get any better on this, uh, on this well, world. Well, one thing's for sure. It's definitely intensifying and it's definitely polarizing. Oh, absolutely. It is. Yeah. It, it's just really weird. And I almost feel so encroached upon here in the U S it feels to me like, that the average being who, who's an American here in the United States is just being encroached upon with so much evil, even though they're not full, they're not feeling the brunt of it yet. But I'm telling you, man, it's like you've got the you've got this beast in your backyard, and if people don't pay attention to that, I feel sorry for them because it's there. There's no doubt about it. There's no doubt at all. So, um, yeah, I mean, holding the higher vision and higher consciousness is obviously a good thing to do. But I do think awakening people, which is what we're doing here tonight, and uh, talking about a lot of what you've been doing. Is uh, is very helpful. Uh, you know, you have to. It's interesting. Just recently, um, you know, Wim Binney of uh, he's like a uh, he was like for thirty years with the NSA, and he was like the highest level whistleblower to ever emerge from them. And he said, just recently, he made a statement in London that the ultimate goal of the NSA is total population control. And, you know, prior to that, you know, Edward Snowden came out and saying, you know, to deform the public that what is done in their name and what is done against them. Mm -hmm. You know, so the NSA has just acquired these quantum computers, which we know already they're about 10 years in advance of uh, standard technology anyway, mm -hmm. uh, that have artificial intelligence to replace the, uh, you know, the, the thousands of people who listen to certain tagged conversations, you know, like right. this one. <laughs> you yeah. know? Well, no, and, tell uh, me about it. <laughs> but you know what? <laughs> no, go ahead. <laughs> I'll comment. Oh, oh, it's just that uh, you know, with uh, with that degree of quantum computer processing, I don't know if you have any idea of how how they can they have enough storage capability for the next hundred years of every communication on this planet, and to artificially understand what every conversation is doing and in order to categorize it almost reminds me back in the 1940s when IBM was doing the punch cards for Auschwitz you know for the death camps you know mm -hmm. um, they have this amazing uh, ability to know what the populace what an incredible feedback tool for psychological operations in order to get an idea you know Facebook is one thing that they use you know of course uh, but every single conversation on the planet to get an idea of what the mentality, what pe who knows what, and what the general consensus is, mm -hmm. and to be in order to have their Tavistock think tanks, of which there's thousands of, which they put billions of dollars into, to know how to tailor the uh, mainstream media to know exactly what will fit the agenda in the. Uh, the response that they're seeking. Right. Well, you know, this dovetails into the psychotronic programming, of course, and anytime you're working with the supercomputers and they're acquiring data and they're doing data mining, they're going to be interpolating that data and, and what they do and what the, I know because I've been a test pilot for their technology, they'll do a playback with artificial intelligence with a neural interface of the target, which means that everything they've done and said will be recorded and into the artificial intelligence. And eventually, if they wanted to use, like, say, a psychotronic harassment or stalking on the target, they will do that for interrogation and harassment. And believe me, they do. And of course, I'm sure you're familiar with a lot of the gang stalking and things like that. So that's just another level of why NSA is so nosy and wants to be involved in everybody's life. It's not just about you know wanting to know about you. It's really wanting to acquire data so they can use it as a weapon and weaponize it to a point where they can actually target an individual for interrogation, programming, reprogramming, or even inserting and, and uh, memories and removing things that uh, they don't want you to have.
You know, Al- Alan Dulles was one who uh, who uh, started, you know, the MK Ultra mind mm-hmm. control stuff. Right. And uh, you, know, you know, the stuff they have, you know, the, the what the Russians developed and and stuff. It, they're so far ahead of that. You know, when I was working with uh, Dr. Vogel, uh, we uh, imported a camera from England that was used back in the 1950s that was a psychotronic device that stood mm-hmm. about five feet tall, and it it was able to take thousands of pictures. Uh, onto a photographic plate by using a witness, you know, like a, a blood spot or, you know, a photograph or hair or whatever. It contains the DNA signature of, of the person and is able to, uh, I mean, this is like, you know, out of the outer limits, you know, movies. Right. But I worked on this with him because I had a bit of experience working with psychotronics. I actually reverse engineered uh, some many years ago. And uh, we were trying to get the camera bring it up to current technology level, at least in the early 80s, you know, what was technology at that time. Mm -hmm. But uh, George Delawar, who developed the camera, uh, it was an unusual radionic device. And, you know, a lot of radionic devices use like a number of dials in order to set a particular ratio in order to tune in. He He was able to also alter time had a time spiral in it. So he can go forwards and backwards in the time showing that, Everything is interconnected. Uh, and even Dr. Vogel, when he was working with the plant communications, uh, the, the plant in his laboratory at IBM, he, uh, he flew all the way to Prov, Czechoslovakia, and was able to work with a colleague at the laboratory and tune into the plant from the other side of the planet, showing that the inverse square law doesn't, af- is, doesn't apply that it was instantaneous. So, you know, things are uh, connected instantly, you know, through thought, and that we right. live in this holographic matrix, uh, so, which anything can be tuned into, which you're, you're more aware of than, than most people. <laughs> well, I, I've been subjected to the program, that's why. But um, I understand the mind is holographic, and we do have a supercomputer mind, which we don't normally use, like, um, to, to what degree people use their minds. I mean, obviously, they don't use their brains. A lot of them don't. But in any case, I mean, this this whole matrix is all about um, interface with, with artificial intelligence and, and transcending with that technology, but however, it's been weaponized, and that's—I think—that was my point I was trying to make with that. But yeah, I mean, the psychotronics and everything else, everything's been revamped. And and when I see all these people, honestly, I mean, like I've said before, nobody's life is that interesting, and there's no reason for everybody to be um, data mined to such an extent. I mean, nobody's life is really that important, if you ask me. Not like that. Um, so so obviously, it's used for weaponization, and uh, yeah, I mean, I I just. Uh, I look at this and I think to myself, what a better world it would have been had we used everything on such a high positive level. And of course, everything has to be a weapon. You know, they can't they can't do it right for some reason. They just can't seem to get it right. So well, they don't have the power of being alignment with uh, with the, the greater creative force, in which is all moving through everything. Mm-hmm. They're actually working on on a distortion. It's interesting that you know Himmler used to uh, he had his uh, elite. Uh, the SS that were uh, had certain uh, psychic abilities developed. They would have like a group uh, mind uh, thing on the castle. They would work on, you know, to do. Mm-hmm. And one thing I thought it interesting that he uh, he was very very interested in studying karma and the effects of karma. And you know, when all these all these distortions what what is what is normal is is harmony what is normal is loving and harmony and uh mm. you know this is this is what the normal world is uh what they've done is uh manipulated that right. and when you find out the real truth behind the whole thing you find that uh uh, there is a far greater power that's within us that they're deathly afraid of, mm-hmm. and uh, I agree. You know, that's you know. I, I read this one thing, you know, on the internet. Was, I don't know if it was you know BS or not. Somebody made it up. It was a secret covenant of the Illuminati, 
and uh, it said uh, the illusion would be so vast and so uh, I forgot the exact wording, but anybody who would speak of it or, or try to expose it, you know, would be thought of as insane, which is totally true. And and the and they talked about all the things they're doing, which is exactly everything they're doing in the world. And then at the very end, they talk about. Uh, you know, that, whoa, if they ever find out that we're equal and we're one and that, uh, that we, uh, uh, and that if, if we're exposed, that the prime creator will abolish us, you know, I forget the exact wording, but they, the one thing that they were afraid of is that we become spiritually aware. Mm-hmm. Well, and yeah. so I'm, I'm working on that one. <laughs> well, you know, it's interesting. We, we are created, if you ask me, um, we are created off world even before we enter onto this world. And we are creative w- created with awareness. We already have all those keys and components. So, so we never, ever were um, disconnected from source. So whatever right. they're trying to do to disable that, it doesn't work because eventually everything we see, whether it's a pyramid in Egypt or something sacred in the universe and the stars at night, it awakens us to the fact that we are not I would say not from here originally, personally. I mean, I know we are incarnating on here, but I know that our essence of origin is with the universe and the stars, and, and that's my own um, star, star family impression. But I'll tell you point blank, these guys are threatened. They are threatened by our, our abilities because once you switch on, you're into the multidimensional states of consciousness where everything is, is empowering, you know, very empowering. So, but you know what? They're going to they're gonna have to write out their own bad karma, and I do see that too. I think that they've acquired quite a bad... Um, piece of karma that they're going to have to chew up so i wouldn't want to be in their shoes no i hope they choke <laughs> on it to be honest and um you know I, I always said this when i when i leave this planet and if it's still a mess i will make sure that it doesn't stay that way and i'm not coming back physically um but i'm, I'm i'll be damned if i'm going to let these guys win this game so and i know there are many like me like that also so that's all I'll say and, about and, it. And, <laughs> and we're also you know, and, and the extraterrestrials that are here around this planet and interdimensional that are not in our visible uh, visible sight, they, uh, you know, they, they operate by, I had an experience, uh, you know, I've been to a number of CSETI things with Dr. Greer too, you know, where we mm-hmm. people remote view and they bring the ETs down and we've had a number of, of manifestations and, and, you know, where they have come. But, uh, but I had more dramatic experiences on my own personal experience where I uh, was up in the mountains one time and I felt this incredible clear uh, intelligence coming from the sky and I actually it was so clear that I actually put my hand out and I said somebody out there (laughs) you know like that Mm -hmm. and I was with a friend and a star came down and started bobbing up and down and and glowing different colored lights and uh, you know, uh, and I had my friend, I said, do you see what I see? And she became very, uh, very afraid that they were going to come, you know, because she felt like she wasn't cl- uh, clean enough, you know, in order to be in their presence. I kind of wanted to go and you know, meet them. But, you know, we, uh, they're out there <laughs> and, uh, you know, we can communicate uh, with the extraterrestrials through consciousness. That <laughs> They don't use, they don't have a short wave set on their spaceship you know, to talk to uh, SETI. Right. <laughs> they use consciousness, you know, Absolutely. to communicate. There you go. They're extensions <laughs> of us, too. I mean, we are them and they are us. I mean, people want to look at extraterrestrials, look in the mirror. I say that all the time because that's our lineage. That's our celestial heritage. Of course, that's been, uh, you know, history, once again, has rewritten everything to a point where people don't understand their essence of origin, which is huge. So I don't discount um, our our what I call star family out there at all. Um, but I, I do think that we need to step up as, as a civilization and embrace our celestial heritage and start um, letting go of these false programs because it's not in alignment with universal consciousness. And, and uh, I'm sure you're aware of that. So, yeah, you know, and, you know, one of the witnesses that uh, joined me, you know, Clifford Stone, you know, back in when he got out in 1989, there was, they, they had categorized already 57 different species. And the one thing that's interesting, they're all bitrepid. In other words, you know, two eyes, two legs, two arms, you know, whatever, you know, the same thing you see patterned throughout throughout nature you know you see it in the insects you see it in animals you see it you know and you look at nature and the very fact that how it operates fractally and uses the golden mean ratio which is you know goes into infinity talks about our very nature that each one of us as a conscious being is like a fractal of of one larger uh 
orator you could speak, mm-hmm. you know, and, uh, you know, I mean, you know, all the stuff's in, uh, uh, it gets me is that, you know, the Christians and, you know, all the stuff's in there, you know, he talks about, you know, the, I and my father are one, you know, there's no separation and that, uh, greater things you shall do, you know, and, uh, mm-hmm. you know, all, 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 all the juices in there of the, of the truth. Uh, but, you know, people have a way of, uh, rewriting things according to their agenda you know because right. constantine took out uh, 25 books out of the bible and then the other 25 uh another 25 books they uh seriously edited it according to the uh you know the the, the church mm-hmm. uh you know so you have all this distortion going on that everybody's saying oh this <laughs> is the word of god you right. know when uh when you have humans on Earth uh, writing this stuff, right? They're know? actually editing, censoring, and cherry picking. Yeah, that's yeah, uh, exactly. it's quite obvious to me who's been writing those documents. I mean, uh, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure that out. But once again, I think it's a brainwashing tactic, and uh, I think it, it's just people are a byproduct of their belief systems. And I'll tell you what, it's a real red flag if you're if you're after your fellow man with a hateful vengeance. Chances are you probably shouldn't be reading that book and put too much faith into it because universal law doesn't dictate that at all. A man's version of God's law is very different than what the universe sees from uh, from afar. So, so yeah, look at game. look to nature. Nature doesn't get edited by uh otherwise other than Man- monsanto right uh, <laughs> yeah geoengineering you know. <laughs> yeah no it's so true it's so true yeah listen to the animals but even now i feel so sorry for them because everything's changing on this world and and the lack of respect for the wildlife and and the encroachment of things the the greed i mean you know they could say fracking's not not dangerous it is it's horrible it's worthless i mean there are things that they're doing they don't need to do and it boils down to exactly what you were you were testifying about because literally it's about um disclosure closing this technology that could change this world overnight for the better. Um, you know, plus or minus UFOs, yeah, that's all nice and cutesy. But the bottom line is we have te- technology that's so advanced, we could really be, you know, doing miracles on this planet uh, for the better, you know, of mankind. And, and of course, that's uh, maybe we'll see that happen. That's- that's exactly the only reason I do these talk shows is because, you know, it's it's criminal w- how they have retarded uh, all of civilization that they have. We have we have the scientists. I'm willing to go again in front of CBS, you know, which which promised me that I could say I would be able to that that would be set on the air. And this was in the time there was rolling blackouts mm-hmm. in uh, California and it was a huge amount of smog and everything going on uh, that we have a solution to the energy and environmental crisis is not newsworthy. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, you know, um, something's seriously wrong. If that can't get aired to the, to the people of this planet, there's a controlling element that, uh, wants to, uh, see this planet, uh, you know, the, 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 the horrible things that are happening to the ocean life, you know, for the radiation from the radi and the oil spills and, uh, you know, just everything on this planet has been, uh, uh, you know, retarded mm-hmm. by a small group of people right. that have created this breakaway civilization and their own power is secrecy. And that's why we do these shows is to continue to disclose the truth about this and the facts. Well, we've pulled the curtain and the lights are shining right on their ugly little faces. And honestly, I think all these networks, uh, the big mainstream networks need to go. And I think people should really start awakening to the fact where as soon as they drop all these networks, they don't have any more control. Once the, once that media goes, that's it. So, um, you know, that's, that's what I'm looking at anyways. It's just a matter of, of telling the people to switch their televisions off. Stop looking at it. You know, stop listening to the lie. Stop embracing that lie and take a good look at your surroundings. I mean, if you want the truth, look at look at the world around you. I mean, what it's become. Isn't it obvious that things are changing and not for the better? Yeah, or if you do look at TV, look at it, understand it's the main psychological programming tool. And look at it highly objectively mm-hmm. and do your own research. Uh, you know, uh, I've I just recently, you know, I've, I've done that research just in a couple of months of studying and put together things that uh, well-known historians have, have put together. When you put it together, I was shocked, you know. So, 
you know, check out, you know, the webmatrix.net. Mm-hmm. You can just go right to that and it'll show you a little timeline. But, you know, I'm just one witness of hundreds of witnesses. And when you do your own research, don't take anybody's word on anything because there's so much disinformation out there. Mm-hmm. Do your own research. See what see what works with your own reasoning and what's based on historical fact and put the pieces together and you'll see what has been uh, what has been uh, perpetrated mm-hmm. uh, to humanity on this planet? Yeah, it's, it won't make you smile. I'll tell you that much. It's uh, it's very infuriating when I think about it. I'm a more fiery in personality. I think that's why I just I get really ticked off. I'm not the type of person that'll take that smiling at all. Once I once once people deceive me, boy, I'm like I never forget. Um, they burn their bridge with me on a universal level, so that's just the way I see them. But anyways, what projects are you working on these days? I mean, I know you're writing articles and you've written these articles. What else are you doing? Well, you know, uh, I spent I spent a decade, uh, you know, with uh, working a lot with Professor Loiter uh, and, you know, Dr. Greer, uh, you know, in, in the first several years, and I carried on myself working with different inventors and you know, and it's just frustrating, you know, because uh, whenever somebody starts to come out with something, either they're they're a national security act, they get mer- they get murdered, they uh, you know, one thing after another. I, I still have contacts with a couple, but you know, it's just been mm-hmm. uh, it, it's you know, I live off grid on the mountains, and uh, uh-huh. you know, I I every way I can, you know, to uh, you know, I growing my own food i'm going to be building a little uh, aquaponic uh, greenhouse because it doesn't use up water you know you can nice. keep recycling this thing it's wonderful you know yeah those are and great i think world war ii you know they had the victory gardens everybody was growing their own gardens i mm-hmm. highly recommend everybody get into any way you can grow your own food it's totally. healthier life force going into your body you know you get that stuff that's being trucked into the stores because someday you may not be able to go to the store to buy anything or it may be way too expensive to buy you know exactly the more independent you can uh, become from uh, the corporate infrastructure that we're all been dependent upon uh the better the healthier you, I agree. you will be i totally agree do you have your own well you obviously do right yeah yeah, yeah i have a well great. and excellent uh you know but uh well, I, do, I agree yeah, with you I on mean, that one oh go ahead yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's uh yeah i love i love being self-reliant you know he, he teaches you to try to learn how to fix everything yourself too you know to uh to make everything but it's kind of fun it's like your own little ship that you're you know you have to keep the submarine going by keeping everything making sure the power's working making sure the water's working making sure you know everything's going but oh, absolutely. you know there's ways that everybody could be everybody could have their own little little box so to speak that runs everything in their house and they don't need to be connected to the grid uh, i've seen technologies that work uh, and uh, excellent. I and you know, God, I want to get rid of internal combustion engines. You know, and and they have the technology we can have as a uh, what do you call a um, kind of a transitory technology that can create hydrogen in your car, so you can still use your uh, your Mercedes Benz. You know, that r- can be running on hydrogen. Your engine will last longer. It burns clean. There's no pollution uh, until we get uh, you know little electric vehicles, or even better yet, little anti-gravity vehicles that uh, we don't even need roads and need the tar. Everything are all over the place. I mean, there, it could be a whole world that uh, is. Is, sounds like a science fiction to our current indoctrination, but it's completely feasible. And that technology resides in these breakaway uh, uh, civilizations that have uh, operated in secrecy for mm-hmm. uh, all these years. Right. 
Well said for sure. Well, listen, we're getting ready to wrap this up here, Dan. I just want to thank you so much for joining us tonight. It's been awesome to have you on. I really want to have you back too, because we have so much more to talk about with the technology. So, um, Oh, so. I can't believe we actually did two hours, didn't we? I know. It's amazing, <laughs> isn't it? It's been great. Though. I'm so appreciative of you being here and um, really, really thank you for coming forward and being a presence and being uh, out there for everybody. And I just want everybody to uh, want to thank everybody, first of all, for tuning in tonight. I hope you enjoyed um, the information and stay tuned for David Dungeon and Becky coming up next with shiny side out to sail you on into the night from down under of course and with that being said dan how else um, can people get in touch with you uh, what's the best way to do that uh go to www.thewebmatrix.net and uh they can and i have a facebook link they can talk to me it has a it's a long history of tells about the whole thing and just remember that uh keep it's not a doom and gloom message but this is a message of empowerment uh that we do have the power within us to become aware of who you are and that we can change this agreed upon reality that has been falsely uh put upon us Mm, that's well said. And um, are you writing any new books, though? I don't know if I asked you that one. I know you do the articles. <laughs> uh. Yeah, Mark's saying I should write a I should write a book. You know, I, I they wanted me to write this article, and they wanted it to be ten thousand words, and it ended up being about ninety thousand words. So, um, I, I guess I should actually write a book. But yeah. uh, you know, uh, a lot of people have great books out there. A lot of stuffs out there, and uh, I should write a book on uh, geometry and consciousness and uh, the work I did with Dr. Vogel. Oh, Maybe yeah. I'll do that sometime. That would be awesome. Yeah, I'd like to hear more about that, actually. So hopefully next time when you come on the show, we can oh, talk. That, that would be a whole show in itself. <laughs> really? Yeah, it sounds fascinating indeed. And, of course, um, did you work a lot with sound when you were working with him? Well, the psychotronic device that we're using used sound uh, mm -hmm. in order to create the imagery, but uh, mostly it was... Uh, 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 you know, a breath and conscious intention, and uh, 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 you know, and yeah, that, that that goes into such a long topic. <laughs> right? No, that's okay. No, I was just curious. But what exactly did you do when you were in the military? I was in communications. Oh, you were in uh, communications, so you really can't I was elaborate in on that. Communications. Or? Okay. Uh, yeah, Naval Communications Station, San Francisco. I worked there for a couple of years. Um, I was in charge of the code room. I was a high-speed code cool. operator. Oh, I love and that. Do, 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 that type oh, sweet, of thing. And then man. they uh, shipped me off to <laughs> Vietnam, and I was in combat action there with, with a little bray and camouflage thing and an M16 wow. and uh, on a riverboat repair barge. Uh, my goodness. Well, I'm glad you made at. it back. I'm, I'm glad you're here. And thank you so much, Dan. And thank you, everybody, for tuning in. And have a great week, everybody. Oh, I really enjoyed this, Flora. Thank Me you. Me too. Thanks, Dan. Bye, everybody. Thank you.